Welcome everyone to today's video. It has been some days since the last video. Not only have I been a little bit busy, I also wasted enormous time trying to update Firefox. The problem is, since some versions, six months or so, maybe longer, Firefox requires Rust to compile. Rust is some new programming language and they start to use it in their rendering backend and whatnot. Normally that would not be any issue at all. Like all the other languages, GCC, Pascal, um, Lua, Python, Ruby, Perl, whatsoever. We and all the other distributions have packages for that for a very long time. However, unfortunately, Rust is totally not packaging friendly. I really have to wonder what they were thinking. Open source programmers really should know better. If you follow the install instructions, they have here this really unfortunate habit of some latest new school kind of remote code execution. You are supposed to run here curl to download their startup Rust shell script thing and pipe this through your bash and that is downloading and installing all the packaging stuff. However, I really don't think this is okay. First of all, the, yes, this is HTTPS, but people can also, man in the middle, attack people, can also show you any other website and just show you some slightly similar URL. And in general, I think this kind of things. First of all, I want an old-fashioned source table, which you don't find here anyway. You need to go here through other installation steps. They have here some binary packages. So if you prefer not to use a shell script directly, download run up in it for the following platforms of choice. But thank you very much. You also find here eventually source code at the very end. However, when you extract this, there is a configure. However, when you run this configure, you notice it then tells you to run this X Python. I mean, by the way, what is it? X Python. Can this not at least be compiled or built or whatever? Okay, X Python. But so this X Python, you can run this Python, you can also run it just as X Python. Then it's doing build stuff and such, and you realize the first moment that this is downloading some binary thing. And this unfortunately will download much more. And um, this is also then not a regular make make install thing. And this is really unfortunate to bootstrap. I can understand they no require Rust compiler, but in my opinion it should be enough to have a relatively recent Rust compiler around, which I have here now, actually right now the exactly same that is this. And nonetheless it's downloading this bootstrap stuff. And maybe you can configure this away somehow, but I would need to investigate this further. So I spent many hours building and trying to package Rust and uh, Rust is not enough. There is a package manager for Rust called Cargo and when you look in Firefox it does not only need Rust, it also needs Cargo. I had both installed but they were from six months ago, Rust 1.23 or so and Cargo 1.20 or so. And the problem was, and additionally, the problem is also additionally that this cargo is even less friendly to package. And also it didn't build always for me, so one in three tries it would hang with something. Because this cargo, in my opinion, this is also really stupid. So this cargo is here also install cargo. And in good old Rust tradition, it asks us for a remote code execution again. Curly is some HTTP static Rust lang or okay, so actually this is the same. So this Rust up is probably also bootstrapping cargo or installing a binary of this. If you follow here the link compiling from source, you need here a Python curl CMake. Mm, okay, I wonder if this is a fancy cargo manager that they additionally need CMake, but whatever. And then continues the stupidity. Not only do you need Rust to build Rust, you need cargo to build cargo. In my opinion, one of the next most stupid constructs in modern computing history. And then you should run cargo build release and this is supposed to build cargo. So I understand the chicken and the egg problem, but this is really total unnecessary to create this. They could build cargo with makefile with a stupid shell script running the handful of build commands in a shell script or whatsoever. And the stupidity does not end there. So 
maybe at this point you think maybe I wasted 10 minutes with this. No, I wasted a whole day with this. Although I had already cargo installed, it was again not new enough to build cargo. And then to at least moderately okayish build cargo, I had to go through endless edit and compile cycles. In T2 this means we disable all the configure make and make install stuff, all the detection for auto tools and make files and CMake and SCONs and whatsoever and just call you this cargo release and also the install would actually by the way not install new stuff when it's already there or so so you need force for this because this would only want like not overwriting installed stuff or something when I was mostly done with all of this I I wasted one build not having installed this the installation of Rust is um, similar, disable most of the standard stuff as configure does not accept most of the options, only a little bit here. And then this X Python build and install. However, for this to work, you need all the Rust and Cargo installed, obviously, which is quite a showstopper. I have to unfortunately waste many more weekends and days for this. The stupidity does not end there. Um, does it not? Because this Rust and Cargo does not just compile Rust and Cargo, they also compile here dozens of small micro packages. So they constantly download stuff from the internet when you build this. It should be visible here somehow. Um, what am I looking at? This was Rust. So Cargo. Cargo builds here dozens, if not hundreds, of micro packages. You see open SSL bindings, spec trace, regex, unicode, term color, I don't know, hex home, what's the heck? I have no idea, ATTY, um, socket, CMake, curl, lipset bindings, whatsoever. So just to compile Firefox, you are building Rust and Cargo with dozens if not hundred micro packages and they are all downloaded from the internet so this is also totally mitigating here the distribution build process normally you would want to install from your Debian, Fedora, SUSE, Gentoo, T2 packages this Rust cargo socket or whatever binding but no this stuff is here installing everything for an hour and then you <laughs> will not believe that this is not the end. Uh, I need to check if it's... Um, because the last build was... Was this even successful? Because guess where they are ending up? If you build this as Joe user, it will end up in home Joe. But as system-wide distribution packaging, this ends up in guess where root.cargo. And I have no idea what they're thinking. Which distribution, which user would want this in the home directory? And this is also a total pain to package for distributions. This can obviously not package like this. And um, we have here now 571 megabyte of stuff, of things, of hundreds of micro bindings and whatnot. And um, here. It's 500 megabyte in some registry and with cache and index and yeah you see source github and seriously this is not what i want and not what i think anyone would want so houston we have a problem this is really people wonder when is the year of the linux desktop and i have to say the year of the linux desktop is not when we have 500 megabyte of random hash checksum cluster nonsense in the home directory in some hidden .cargo file and after all of this Firefox did not even work. It segmentation faulted me and I spent debugging around in the just in time compiler of Firefox and I could not get this to work and I have no idea why this was segmentation faulting. I actually so when I run this Firefox, you see it's crashing. So this is a debug built with debugging symbols. And 
loading the symbols will take forever because these objects with debugging symbols are huge in the range of hundreds of megabytes. So even loading this takes quite a while, especially from the external SSD that right now so it should be USB 3, but you see we load here 23 megabyte a second. Maybe your CPU limited. I actually need to be careful not that my audio drops out here, because when this thermal throttles we get audio dropouts recording this on Linux. And um, so the backtrace is, uh, I think, okay, maybe this is already not the original crash anymore because I patched there around. I here in baseline JIT and I edited around there, so this is not the original crash anymore. It was 670 something or... Here I patched around because this binary search is failing and not returning some mid process counter or so offset relative JIT pointer thing. And I try to debug here around and try if it can continue if we linear search the whole array there or, or tree of JIT offset entries. But that also doesn't work, still second falls differently. After spending a good eight hours on all of this in total, first fighting with this Rust and Cargo build until it at least built mostly okay-ish, still a total mess it installed there, that needs to be addressed, but at least it works now. I booted my internal SSD here, because I have a second installation on this internal SSD that I'm not using that often, and I test built a GCC8 on this the other week also, and this Firefox crash is magically disappearing with GCC8, so this may have been some GCC7 code generation alignment of the stars incompatibility or something. Anyway, now with all of this, I have the very latest Firefox running here. As I tell you the story here, is it was a total pain. And there was a board here about Firefox. This is now the latest 6002 Firefox Quantum. My point of the view is this modern open source packaging, unfortunately, is a total nightmare and mess. And I understand um, this GNU autoconf that is resulting in this configure files is not nice. This M4 macros and whatever are also a pain, but at least that is what people know and works. And reinventing here the packaging hell for Rust and Cargo is, in my opinion, not contributing to great developments in open source. This is only you know, there are 20 make file systems and, and build things from Ccons, CMake and Mason and QMake and whatnot. You know how it is with standards. There are 20 not good standards and you create your 21st standard and then it's a 21st not good standard. And here, yeah, as I said, in my opinion, this is not time well spent in the open source landscape. Of course, everyone is free to do whatever they please. But if this ends up in the build dependency of Firefox and resulting in hours, I think the compilation from source of Rust and Cargo is much longer than Firefox. So now you spend more time compiling Rust and Cargo than you end up compiling Firefox. And as I had this JIT problem there, then you end up with super complicated constructs of sources and languages, everything intermixed together. And in the end, it segmentation falls. This is really sad. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. Even if I'm not posting videos for a day or two or a week, it's usually because I'm very busy with things and spending extra time compiling or getting open source stuff to work and work better. Share, like and subscribe, spread the word. This is not hate from my part, this is only pointing out obvious problems. In my opinion, this is not perfect and not how it should be. I also hope Rust and Cargo developers watch this video and think how they can make this better. I would much prefer Perl-like packages that we have this individual component and that I can build just the 10 things that I need and not the 100 things I do not need. And also this needs to work more in harmony with distribution package managers. I want to install this with my distribution packages and not run additional source packaging stuff that is totally alien to my distribution and is doing things behind the back and leaving everything in root.cargo or joeuser.cargo and in my opinion this does not compute. So I hope you learned something and I hope to see you soon for the next videos to come.